a lot of the work that, that we do, we can't just do in the libraries or archival centers or behind the hedges at Rice. It has to involve the public and it has to involve ways to make the information that we're gaining available to the public through really powerful interactive websites like Slave Voyages. Uh, students participating in the Slave Voyages uh, project, they are really leaving a mark on our understanding of the history of slavery and the slave trade. Right? The, the data that they are collecting, that's going to be available on the website. And the website is accessed by you know, thousands of people every month. I mean, being here in a library and archive setting might be like one of the only images that does come to mind when people think of humanities research, but it definitely isn't as easy as just reading a book. You know, it's coming in and having your questions in mind and reading through letters, you know, ledgers, sentiments that people wrote down and trying to make sense of it because a lot of the values of this time period don't make sense to us and trying to incorporate that into digestible information so people can understand more about this time period um, is really difficult, especially when we think about the history of slavery in the United States. Um, it hasn't been taught to the extent that you might expect. Um, and so I think doing this kind of research specifically can be challenging when we come up against a lot of misconceptions about slavery, um, people not wanting to talk about it because it's uncomfortable. Yeah, we are currently you know, living a moment of reckoning with our past and our history with slavery and segregation in the United States, in Texas, and even here at Rice University. And Slave Voyages you know, provides a moment for reflection. I, pathway you know, to contextualize this difficult history. We're trying to document the history of slavery in Texas and abroad as well. Um, we have to look at documents. We have to come in with a set of questions, first of all. You can't just, you know, you have to know sort what of you're what, you're look, what you're looking for. But then you can't just look at documents for what they say. You also have to look at what they don't say. And that's something that we've learned throughout our Rice careers about reading the silences, as they say, um, trying to see who they omit from the historical record and how we can add those people in where they're missing. In my research on the Rice family, um, one of the sorts of records that I've been using is the probate record, which are the uh, court um, affairs that follow the death of someone who owned a lot of property. Um, and of course, before the Civil War, um, enslaved people were considered property. So in these sorts of documents, you'll have human beings listed alongside oxen or wagons or um, a cotton gin. Um, so it can be really difficult to look at those records and try and gain an understanding of the, a person's daily life from a record where they're listed as a piece of farm machinery. Mm -hmm. um, but when you, when you read between the lines, when you read for silences, like Victoria was mentioning, you can um, begin to undercover things about their family structures or um, attempts at escape and resistance. Um, so it's not readily there, but when you go in with those questions in mind, you can find these really sparse details that end up leading you to a really rich story.